got a river of life rolling out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors and lets the captives free. I've got a river of life running out of me. Bring up the well. And in my soul, bring up the well. And make me whole. Bring up the well. And give to me this life abundantly. Well, I've got a river of life rolling out of me. Makes the lame. doors and sets the captives free. I've got a river of life coming out of me. Spring up the well in my soul. Spring up the well and make me whole. Spring up the well and give to me of life abundantly. this evening, and we just ask that you'll bless this message in Jesus' name. Amen. go. Well, it's been two weeks since we've been in the building on a Wednesday night, and uh, I'm glad we're back. I'm glad we're, we're worshiping God together, and uh, it's just, it's better this way. <laughs> so we're, we're going to continue in our series, um, A New Name. And uh, I, I, I love, as, I, as I'm studying stuff out, I, I, I haven't used isagogics and esagesics in a while, so I decided to start using them again. And uh, it's great because you're going to hear a lot Sunday morning um, as, I've, as I've come to a place in, uh, in the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony where we're going to start talking about a testimony. All right, and uh, and I love it because of the reference God gave me, and then he I had to go back in isagogics and and exegete it to find out what was going on in that area at that time, and it was kind of interesting the the parallels to the message that God's that God has given us in the last bunch of bunch of weeks. Um, it's just so cool that God works the way God works, and and again you know. I don't know what goes on in people's lives. I have no idea, unless they tell me. Um, a lot of times people like to keep things hidden. That's fine. But remember this, God knows everything. God knows everything. And he knows everything about you. And, and you know what, here's the funny thing. The enemy knows you very well too. And so he knows what buttons to push and the things to project to you that make you become 
well, a little bit dissatisfied with what God's talking to you about. And so, you know, it's, it's really kind of interesting, but we're going to talk about that Sunday. Um, Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your grace, your love, and your mercy, Father. We thank you that you love us so much, Father, and that you know us so well, that your word is written in such a manner that it lays out what we have to do. And so, Father, tonight as we look again at a new name, Father, we just ask, Lord, that you will open the eyes and ears of our heart, Father. Lord, allow our ears to hear precisely your message. Don't let the enemy come in and try to bamboozle us with ridiculousness. And so, Father, again, we want to be focused on you. We want to be focused on your word. We want to be living under the blood of the sacrificial lamb, Father. So, Lord, again, bless this message, Father. We thank you, love you, and praise you. In your precious name we pray, Lord. Amen. So I love the book of Jeremiah. I've, I've always loved Jeremiah. I've, I've read the book. Uh, I, I love what the prophet Jeremiah is told by God. I love what he's told him to say. And, and this evening, I, I want to I go to Jeremiah 17, 7 through 9. 17, 7 through 9. So let's go there real quick. Excuse me, I still have allergies. My cold, just this cold is ridiculous. It just won't let go. Yeah, Jeremiah 17, 7 through 9. All right, I know he's in there somewhere. Oh, there he is. All right. Jeremiah 17. Yeah. Nice, right there. So Jeremiah 17 says this, 7 through 9. It says, there it is. Actually, let, let's go to 5. We'll start at 5. Because here it says, Cursed is the one who trusts in human strength and the abilities of mere mortals. His very heart strays from God. He is like a little shrub in the desert that never grows. He will see no good thing come in his way. He will live in a desert wasteland, a barren land of salt where no one lives. But I love this. Here it comes. But blessed, but blessed is the one who trusts in me alone. You know, there, there's tons of things that the world has to offer. And there's tons of things that the world wants us to buy into thinking that it's going to be our savior, our deliverer, our transformer, and our sanctifier. I, I, I love these words, and we've seen them a lot. Trust me. Trust me. You know, I've heard a number of people that, that I would no more trust say, trust me, than, than that I would buy something from them. See, it would be like, it would be like going down to um, Battery Park in New York. And the guy opens his coat and says, look, man, I got like seven Rolexes, and I, I can give you a great deal, and you buy a Rolex for 25 30 bucks. And, and you open that Rolex, and, and in there is a rubber band, and in that rubber band, it's set to go at the minute you press the button. It'll run for about, you know, 15, 20 minutes, long enough for the guy to take your money and leave, and you'll never find him. And you just bought a piece of tin that's got not even the real crown that the Rolex has on it, see? Again, the world wants to sell us things that are not, that are not, and do not come with a warranty or a guarantee. But see, God says this, and I'll talk a little bit more about this Sunday. He says, I will never leave you or forsake you if you put your trust in me, see? Now, when we receive Christ, again, you know, <clears throat> we have a new name, and that new name is righteous. See, we're righteous now. It's, it's, it's like this. It's, it's, it's like this. It's not Mark Adam. It's Mark Christ. It's not, it's not Curtis Adam. It's Curtis Christ. See, we've been given a new name. We now have the name of Christ, because now, through that new name, what are we supposed to be? Christ-like. You know what? Christ never trusted the things of the world. He said, he said that. He said, don't be conformed to the world. 
see? We've got to live in the world, but don't be conformed by it. Don't let it be the thing that, that brings you to this place where you think that is going to be the be-all of all of everything. <clears throat> but blessed is the one who trusts in me alone. Last Sunday, we, we read the verse that said God was a jealous God. I think it was last Sunday. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I read that in my notes for this Sunday. But God is a jealous God. He doesn't want to share you. He doesn't want to share you. That's why he said again, look, cast all your cares on me. So again, here it says, but blessed is the one who trusts in me alone. I will be his confidence. I will be his confidence. See, again, you know, how many times have we put confidence in something and what happens? We're let down. We're let down. But blessed is the one who trusts in me alone. I will be his confidence. He will be like a tree planted by the water. See? Constant nourishment. Constant, constant feeding. Sending out its roots beside the stream. It does not fear the heat or drought. Its leaves stay green and its fruit is dependable no matter what it faces. If we're living in the new name, if we've received Christ and our name has been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life and we've been given that new name through transformation, we, no matter what comes, see, stay green and our fruit is dependable no matter what it faces. See? It never ceases to amaze me that we cannot comprehend how wicked the heart can actually, the wicked can be very, the heart can be very wicked. It can be very, very wicked. And will be if we allow it. Now, if we receive Christ and never gather the new name, or receive the new name, or live under the blood of the sacrificial lamb, then we're not getting the full benefit, or, or, or let's put it this way, we're not living beside that stream. And we're not putting our roots into that stream. And because we're not putting that, our roots in that stream, every time a storm comes, we freak out. See, this tree that's by the water, that's, that's roots are running along the stream, it doesn't, it doesn't worry. Because it's, const, it's constant. It's going to be fed, it's going to be fed, it's going to be fed. And what happens when we're fed? We grow stronger. We go stronger. We live in the new name. See? We live in the new name. So now, how many times have we seen or heard the I word? I, I, I. When it's not I, but Christ who lives in me. All right? So, so Christ, we receive Christ, and the Holy Spirit lives within us. Now remember, three in one. The trinity of three, three individual entities, all from one. The comforter is the Holy Spirit, and he stays here. Jesus went to be with the right hand of the Father, at the right hand of the Father. But the Holy Spirit, in Christ, still is with us. And in Christ, what happens? He comforts us, he leads us, he assures us, and he shows us. He shows us. Now, you know what happens a lot of times, you know, I would rather say, I'm going to let the Holy Spirit lead me to the places that I need to be, rather than, I, I did this, I did that. No, you know what? I can't do anything. I can't do anything. In, in my humanity, I've tried to do things, and it doesn't work. But only through Christ can I do things. Only when I have <laughs> the backing of the Holy Spirit, the grace and mercy of the Father and the Son, can I do the things that I'm called to do? That's the only time I can do them. It's so funny. You know, again, we're, we're watching little Isaac make his appearance. And, and you know, it's funny because every time there's a, there's a labor pain, Patrick's quoting a verse. Patrick's going, I can do all things through Christ. Pat, I mean, it was all about God. It was all about the Lord. It was all about the Holy Spirit. And, and, you know, it was kind of funny because as, as we were watching this, you know, because, again, you know, I, 
you got to know the dynamics. You got to know what's going on in the room. You got to know what's you know happening in, here and there. And, and and every time that was being said, you know the Holy Spirit was going yes, yes, yes. See, and and, and again, we'll talk about testimony s- Sunday. But again. In that new name, it's not rah, rah, zimbumba. It's thank you, Jesus. You can do this. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. The Lord's here. He's got his hand on it. The Holy Spirit's making sure this is right. And, and you know, probably Haley at that time wasn't real satisfied with the whole thing because it was time to get Isaac out. And she let us know it was time to get Isaac out. And then Isaac showed up. See? And, but again, here, here's this funny thing. In the new name, we don't freak out. We don't get worried. We don't, we don't spaz. We trust and have confidence in the Lord. So in that, what are we? We are planted by the water. And our roots are getting constant feeding from the Lord. See? Now, the people that don't have the new name, that are known as Joe Adam, Bob Adam, Phil Adam, you know, all the Adam, the Adams family, all of them, see, don't have that opportunity. It's, oh, whoa, oh. I can imagine in an unsaved house what would have been going on at that birth. There would have been panic, freaking out, you know, oh, quick, quick, quick. But there was peace. There was peace. And, and that, that's what was going on, see. And, and then it's funny because, you know, Scarlet, I love Scarlet. We have something in common. I'll, I won't say, but anyways, they woke Scarlet up because they had prepared Scarlet for this whole thing. Now here comes Scarlet down the stairs in Patrick's arms, and she she's sitting there, and then all of a sudden Patrick's encouraging Haley, and Crystal's got Scarlet next to her, and Scarlet's eyes are like the size of saucers as she's watching this. And Scarlett watched Isaac come out. Actually, Scarlett watched Isaac get pulled out because so, he needed a little help. So out he comes. He's got him. He's crying. He's like going, what the heck have you done to me? And here's Scarlett. Now, this is, you got to understand, Scarlett, four years old, all right, four years old, quoting Bible verses. Scarlet, four years old, who sits down with a family and reads the word of God. Runs out, looks up at me. I go, where are you going? She goes, I had to make sure Birdie's all set. Now, Birdie's the dog. Because Birdie probably was, you know, wondering what this crying about. Then she comes back down. She goes, Birdie's good. She goes back into the room with her mother. Then she comes out. I go, what are you doing? Where are you going? She goes, I need a book. I go, why? She goes, Isaac needs a book. And I'm like going, oh. So she runs upstairs and down she comes and she goes to the side of the bed and she throws a book on the bed and there you go. See, again, the confidence of of knowing who the Savior is, she's only four. But again, what does the Word of God say? Have childlike faith. Have childlike faith. See, again, it's, it's not... I, I really wish, I really wish that the childlike faith could stay in people and that it, the tarnishment of the world would not eat in and steal that. Because it's that childlike faith that has amazing trust in who God is. Amazing trust. We don't even question, say, Lord, I'm going to hand this to you, and Lord, Here's the deal, because I know my, no, my name is no longer Phil Adam, it's Phil Christ. I've, made, been, I've been made righteous by the Son, and now you see me as something else, rather as the Adam nature, see? Because again, unsaved, it's Adam nature, see? So again, in the I, when we see or hear the I word, do you know, what the I word brings, it brings pride. It brings arrogance as well as ignorance. These are the things that the I, I, I. Remember, you can't do anything. Only Christ can do all things. Through Christ, you can do all things. 
When we live in the eyes, it's of the Adam nature. That's what it is. We build our pedestal and then wonder why we fall off of it. In my pedestal, I'm not trusting in God alone. I'm trusting in the things of this world. As God says in John 2, 17, the things of this world will pass away. The things of this world will pass away. So when we start putting our trust in all the things of this world, what we're saying is God, who has an eternal purpose, who has an eternal plan, and has given me eternal life, well, that's not good enough. I want a guarantee. And, and, you know, again, you know, I love it because nothing's guaranteed. I was reading a little story today about a lady from New York who bought a pair of L.L. Bean shoes and now wants to sue L.L. Bean because they're not waterproof. So take them back to L.L. Bean and get another pair. See? The, the thing is, is here's the thing. If, if, if I... I'm looking for a guarantee from the world. I'm not going to find it. Why? Because the world changes every single minute. And the world changes not for the greater good of the whole, but for I. See? That's what the world does. But see, in Christ, it's, it's not I. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can't do it in my own strength. I can't do it... In, in the Adam nature. See? Sure, I'll build a pedestal, but I guarantee you I'm coming off that pedestal at some point in time. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trusting in God alone. I'm trusting in the things that he says, the things of this world will pass away. I as well love Romans 3, 10 through 12, because it says that no one that no one can bring righteousness in themselves. No one can bring righteousness in themselves. We need that new name. We need to be before God. We need, we need to be, who does Mark belong to? Mark belongs to Christ. So now Mark is Mark Christ. See? It's not Mark Adam. Because I'm no longer living in the Adam nature. I, I'm now living this is what happens. I'm now living as Christ-like, see, in the nature of God and in the will of God. That's what happens in salvation. I live in the nature and the will of God. I'm no longer living in the Adam nature. I have a new name. I have a new name. So, because, again, Romans says, no one can bring righteousness in himself. Even Paul knew this. Paul knew this. And used to say in himself he was the worst of the worst. What did Paul do when he was Paul Adam? He killed Christians. He sought them out to persecute them, punishment, and bring them to death. That's what Paul did. In himself. That's what he did. In his Adam nature. And so again, Paul knew this and he said, I'm the worst of the worst. We don't seek God's nature. We don't seek God's nature. We don't seek God's nature. We have to choose. We don't, we don't seek his nature and will. We have to make a choice. We have to make a choice. It's, it's like, you know, I, I, I got to check with somebody, but I want to talk about them this Sunday, about some choices they made and, and, and where they went and what happened. But... I've seen God move in many, many ways once people make a decision and make a choice and then live by that choice, trusting in God alone, trusting in God alone, all right? Because, you know, I talk about my situations and circumstances that I went through, but you know what? That's all fine and dandy, because, again, I'm not going to speak about somebody unless I get permission, because I could, I could speak about everybody in this church and embarrass anybody and, and just make people go, oh, my God, I can't believe he said But I'm not going to do that, see? So I, I've got to ask a couple people about some things, and I will do that, and then I will, I will use that as an illustration this Sunday. Again, we don't seek God's nature and will. It's a choice. And that choice only comes through a decision based on what the Lord said to Jeremiah. 
But blessed is the one who trusts, I love this, but blessed is the one who trusts in me alone. Alone. Like I said, God is a jealous God. He don't want to share you. See? He, he, he made a plan. He created a plan. And in that plan, you made a choice. And in that choice, you were given a new name as you received him, as you repented, received him. And he, he began to dwell within you. you may, he made that plan. He gave you a new name. And in that new name, he said, look, this is the how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to do it. Because this is the way that I'm saying it has to be done. See? Now, now, I know that when the Lord told me, this is the way it has to be done, uh, the first time I balked, the first time I balked, I went, no, nah, I got this. I'm good. I got it. I'm, I'm good. And then I watched it all turn into a crap show. And then the next time he said, look, here's the deal. If you don't do this, I'm just going to give you a little for, forbearance. If you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. And, and, and you're not going to like the end result. Yes, you will still go to heaven. But you will miss out on all the blessings that you will receive if you, do, if you walk with me. See? If you walk with me, there's going to be amazing things that I'm going to have you do that are just going to blow your mind. And in that, you're going to prove who I am through your testimony. But we'll talk more about that on Sunday. Again, the choice comes through a decision based on what the Lord said to Jeremiah. Listen, do you know that a person without Christ, no matter what their name may be to the Lord, they are known as Adam. Adam. That's what they're known as, because they live in the Adam nature. See? And, and, and what did Adam do? Adam made a decision based on an emotion, based on a, based on a, a feelings and a sense, and he ate the apple. And then what did they do? They tried to hide from God. See? They tried to hide from God. What did they do? Oh, they ran, they hid. But God's not stupid. He knows. He goes, hey, why are you hiding on me? And then, and then they tried to cover themselves with a false covering. A false covering, fig leaves. And God said, what are you doing? Why are you naked? And, and he knew, excuse me, but he wanted them to tell them. See? And then what did God do? God created a covering for them that was blood-bought, and it became a blood-purchased offering for Adam. Were they ever allowed to live in the garden again? No. No. They blew those benefits. But God still watched over them. As a matter of fact, Haley, I see you watching. That's why you have pain when you give childbirth. <laughs> because Eve ate the apple. I'm sure she's loving that right now. She's probably throwing things at the computer. Anyways, again, no matter what their name may be, Lord, they are known as Adam. Again, referencing last Wednesday's fix, we have been given a new name in Christ. And that new name comes with a new identity. Now, identity in the Greek is sumsukos, and it means of one mind or of one accord. So when we're given that new name, we've made a commitment to Christ through the saving grace of who he is, through the blood of the Lamb, and now we have said, Lord, we're going to be of one mind and of one accord with you. Again, I love this. It's a close soul identity with Christ. It's a close soul identity with Christ. Again, the new identity in the Greek is sumtsukos, and it means of one mind. I'm with one mind with the Lord. I'm going to go to and check his will, his nature, and get his thought on every single circumstance. What does that mean? I better know his word. I better know his word. It's funny how important exegeting and isagogics are in finding out the situation and circumstances of the time and the things that surrounded history in that point. Because then as we look at the word of God, we now have a reference point. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your mind when I talk about this one place. Because it was exactly what was going on in this world today. Way back when. 
And, 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 and it was a testimony in the midst of the crapola that created a stir. A stir, see? Now again, it's a close soul identity with, with Christ. Again, the phrase like-mindedness comes into that definition as well. I, I'm not going to think in Mark Adam. I'm going to think in Mark Christ. See? I'm going to think with the mind and the will and the nature of God. How would God want me to do this? Oh, that's right. He would want me to cast it upon him. Trust in him. Be blessed in trusting him alone. He will be my confidence. I'll be like a tree, immovable, being fed every single day by the life-giving water of the word, of the word, and so my leaves will stay green and I will produce amazing fruit. That's not a difficult thing. It, it really isn't. It's not a difficult thing. Unless we make it. See, unless we refuse to trust in him alone. Because like it said in Jeremiah 5, cursed is the one who trusts in human strength and the abilities of mere mortals. His very heart strays from me, from God. Trust in the Lord. It's, it's like that, 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 the time that I finally realized that. When I wanted to do everything, when I wanted to be able to make things work the way I wanted them to do, and, the, and one day something went horribly wrong in the Lord, I could hear him chuckling and go, say, so listen, when are you going to stop trusting in yourself and trust in me? And I said, wow. And, and you know what's funny? That's when I found Jeremiah 17. And I went, wow, your word says this. Cursed is the one who trusts in human strength and the abilities of mere mortals. His very heart strays from, from me. And I went, wow, Lord, you, forgive me for straying from your nature and will. Because your nature and will are the very things that came with my new name. And I want to live in that. I want the like-mindedness. I want the soul identity. I want to be of one mind and of one accord with you. See? So again, we support the revelation of God in his word because we are no longer living in the Adam nature. So we support God's word. When we are living in that close soul identity, when we are one mind, we, and we are one accord, in the new name of, of Steve Christ, we support the revelation of God in his word First of all, because we are no longer living in Adam nature, but in the nature of God. We're living in the nature of God through Christ in the Holy Spirit. And how are we doing this? By faith. By faith. See? By faith alone. I don't, I don't know what. Well, I, I do because I read the word and I, I, have, I have amazing definition on what God's word says because as I'm studying it, he's revealing it. But again, I don't know what tomorrow brings. I, I have no idea. But if I'm trusting in God because I sit in the right hand of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is indwelling with me, I do not have to worry about a thing. I don't even need to depend on the world. I have Christ and he alone is worthy of me to trust him. See? That's the whole thing. It's so, it's so easy. See? Because we're no longer living in the Adam nature, but in the nature of God through Christ and the Holy Spirit. And again, completely by faith. Completely by faith. You know what happens in faith? <laughs> we get anxious. We get anxious. Well, God's not working fast enough. He's not doing it. Why isn't he doing this? Blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, we get depressed. And we go, oh, it's not working. You know what happens? Here's what God says. First of all, I'm moving. You just don't know it. I'm going before you and setting things up. You just don't understand it. I already have a plan. You need to walk in it. 
I'm moving in my perfect time for the perfect purpose that will bless you in an amazing way. Trust me by faith. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this message. Lord, I'm so glad that I put my trust in you. I know many people that have put their absolute trust in you. And Father, I see amazing blessings coming for them. I've seen amazing blessings that they've received. Father, allow us to understand that in the new name, in the new name, we're no longer known as Adam, but we are known as Christ-like. We are known as your children, Father God. Lord, there's probably people out here tonight that have never received you. And, and it's a quick prayer. It's very easy. It goes like this. Father God, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Come into my heart and save me, Father. Forgive me for all of the things that I've done outside of your nature, your will, and your way, Father. Forgive me for not trusting you as the word that you have written for me says, to trust you by faith. Come into my heart, Lord. Save me. Transform me, Father. Bring me to this place, Father, where I am no longer known by the name of Adam, but I am known by the name of child of the living God. Brother, heir to the throne of glory. My name, your name, my name, my name, your name. Either way, Father. Know me not by Adam, but by who you have called me to be. Lord Jesus, sanctify me, Father. Reveal your plan. If you said that prayer and you received Jesus Christ, I'd love to hear from you. Just text me, uh, I am me, whatever, on this page or whatever. Um, again, new name, written down in glory, the minute you give your entire heart to him. Father, we thank you, love you, and praise you, Lord. Thank you for this message. In your precious name we pray, Father. Amen and amen. We'll see you guys Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. See Big Daddy Don Garlitz.